Okay, this is a video on how to solder electroluminescent wire, and you can see a piece of electroluminescent wire there with just the end cut off. Uh, we're going to have to strip that back and uh, attach a connector, like uh, one of these guys. We're going to solder that onto the end so that we can plug it into the inverter. To... First thing we got to do is take some strippers, some wire strippers like that, and uh, take off the outer jacket. There's a uh, plastic jacket on the outside of the wire. Uh, we're going to strip that off carefully. Okay, we'll just take the strippers like so and very, very, very carefully just take that, take that out of the holder. Just do it like so. That's what the end looks like with the plastic jacket stripped off. And you can see the very, very, very fine uh, corona wires, I think they're referred to. Uh, they're two solid stranded wires, they're about 40 gauge, and you have to strip that very carefully so that you don't uh, nick those. Uh, that's going to take a bit of practice, so make sure you have enough to practice on. Here's a close-up. You can see the corona wires right here. They're very, very, very fine, like a little bigger than a human hair, and there's two of them. Um, if you accidentally nick one and you only have one, that's not the end of the world, but you should practice stripping it so that you preserve both those wires. Thing we're going to do is put some copper tape on and that's going to give us something to solder to those little wires because if you actually just attached a larger wire to those they break in an instant so what we're going to do is fold them back wrap some copper tape around the main plastic jacket and solder them to that just a little piece of this stuff just like that much like so because it's just going to wrap around a couple times it's got some adhesive on it like so. And we're going to fold the little corona wires back so that they're in contact with that copper and that's what we're going to solder them to. Okay, so now we're going to solder that on and just proper soldering technique uh, which you can learn from a book or a website or something. Just make sure they're both nicely soldered on and a good solder joint will always look shiny that's how you know you did a good job then if you've got little tails sticking out just clip them off like so make sure there's no sort of rough edges showing and the next thing you want to do is take like an exacto knife or a razor blade and we're going to scrape the phosphor coating off the center conductor that's the phosphor is actually the part that lights up but you can't solder to it, so you have to expose the bare metal to give you something to solder. So we're just going to scrape a little bit of this guy off here. And just be kind of careful doing this, because you don't want to nick the wire, because that'll make it less strong. But as you scrape, you'll be able to just sort of clean all the phosphor off. And I don't think it's super toxic or anything like that. Probably. Um, you should probably do a better job than this. But you should get it to the point where it's just kind of like shiny metal underneath with no phosphor. If there's a little bit of phosphor on there, the uh, iron will burn it off. But you should be a perfectionist. And then you can just sort of tin that end so that it'll take solder when you come to the point where you're going to solder that. Okay. We've got the piece of L wire and it's got uh, two points that we can solder onto uh, with a uh, sort of big little pigtail with a connector on it that we're going to put on the inverter. This is the part that you're always going to forget and that's to put the heat shrink onto the cable before you uh, start soldering the pigtail on because then you'll have to if you forget you'll have to unhook it and to use two pieces of heat shrink like a bigger one that goes over the main joint like this and covers the, the smaller center conductor joint and then a second piece that'll go inside the main piece um, that just provides a little extra insulation so you want to slide that 
over there and get it way down there so the rest of the um, you know just slide it down to the end somewhere because uh, you'll do that as the very last step um, then the short little piece here that's going to go on the um, pigtail and it's just going to be a little insulator over this guy and then it's going to get shrunk before the big one gets shrunk on so um, when we get the pigtail here it's gonna you want to strip this and match this like that's a pretty good job there um, you want sort of an offset thing so that if there's any strain on this connection it's going to pull on both of these equally if you cut both of these ones to the same length then there'd be sort of a, it would look like that and one of these would take all the force and the other wouldn't and it would be more likely to break so you want to do sort of a you know what I mean woodworking would be a lap joint or something so that these things are cut to match the uh, distance of the two uh, two points you're going to connect them so on this short one here we're going to put the small heat shrink and again slide it up because as soon as you start soldering on there it's going to try to start shrinking and I like to uh, just put a little bit of extra solder on these guys, tin them, um, and then we'll clamp this in the other side of the helping hand, which you can't see from here. But you want it you want it not moving around. You want it so that you know you can just sort of hold these things together like so, so that they're touching. They're not trying to move apart when you're soldering. And then you can, as long as they're both tinned, you can just kind of do like a reflow soldering on those guys there. Um, and try to keep the joint from moving when you're soldering it. Try to keep it like little lumps and bumps from forming. If there's a little peak of solder which tends to form, just, you know, trim it off because that'll keep the heat shrink from going down. And you can just sort of make sure your heat shrink, your small heat shrink fits over that, like so. And then you can solder the other joint. And just, this is the last point where you check that you did remember the other piece of heat shrink and it's there. And again, just tin that. Do a reflow solder kind of thingy there. That looks nice. And then we're going to slide the other piece of... Well, first we should shrink that small heat shrink on. Just make sure there's no problems there. And I use is sold as a paint stripper. So it has a, a really amusing name if you're immature like me. Um, it's about 20 bucks at the hardware store. But if you sp spend a lot more money, you can get a um, proper electronics heat shrink gun for 100 something. But these work just fine. You get the heat shrink in there like so. Take it off. There, it's all nice and shrunk there. And we find the piece that we slid way down there, slide it all up. So it should cover both, like so. Okay, now you can just connect this up to the inverter, see if you did a good job, or whether you're going to have to do it again. The battery. And it lights up. And it's good. You can see that in the dark. Yay. So that's how to solder L-wire.